everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica. On part two of On a Technicality, converting Beast Busters to the JAMA standard, we're going to be adding in all of our power wires needed to power the board. And we have our coffee, which I consider to be one of the most important tools in my entire toolbox to get a project done. So taking a look at the front here, you will see that that four pin power connector, the five volt and ground, is a larger connector than the rest. And that part is back ordered until August of 2020. So we're going to have to work around that just a little bit. So the pins were also on back ordered, so I was able to get these 14 gauge jump cables, one end male, one end female, and I'm just cutting the male end off now because we're not going to need that. What we're going to have to do is splice that into an 18 gauge wire as the 14 gauge is way too big to fit through the through holes on that JAMA fingerboard. So using the right gauge on my wire strippers, I strip that out right there. And I'm going to put an 18 gauge wire right next to that just because I want to have the exact same amount of wire coming out of the 18 gauge as I do the 14 gauge. And the easiest way to measure that is just to put the two cables next to each other side by side and make sure you're getting enough of that insulation off. Now that I have both insulations off, I'm going to put those wires next to each other. And I'm just going to go ahead and give them a nice twist. We're braiding them and getting them ready for the soldering iron. And this is just a really good way to keep those cables together before you get your iron hot. Now as far as splicing cables goes, there's multiple uh, schools of thought on how you do that. I just like to twist the wires together and then basically paint the solder on. Um, NASA actually has a great guide on how to solder wires. The actual PDF is like 140 pages long, but if you want just the down and dirty, um, you can just watch videos on YouTube about how NASA suggests you splice wires. But just hitting it with solder on both ends, I feel gives you a really solid connection. I've never had an issue with this whatsoever, but your mileage may vary. Everyone has different styles and this is just what works for me. So definitely just kind of experiment and see what you like to do. So as you can see, the cables are effectively soldered and spliced together. What I'm going to do now that that has been done is I'm going to bring those wires over to my multimeter. I'm going to insert one probe into the female end of the pin, and I'm going to put the other end of the probe on that bare wire. You do sometimes have to hold it down just to make sure you have a solid connection of the wires do like to flop around, but we're good. Since we do have that open splice, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of shrink tubing over the area in which we soldered those two wires together. That way I know they're totally connected. Once that is nice and sealed, I'm going to bring a second piece of shrink tube over that wire and I'm just going to bend that wire up against the first shrink tube so that we've effectively not only spliced the wires, we've insulated our splice and then we've insulated the cable to make sure that that connection isn't being strained much if at all. It's maybe a little bit overkill but it is a method I like to use just to make sure that my cables are made as well as I possibly can make them. So now that I have that entire cable built, what I'm going to do is bring the multimeter back in and just check for continuity. A good rule of thumb is to just check every time you change something on the wire, that way you don't run into problems down the line. What you're looking at here are the two ground leads for that 5 volt area, and then I have 12 volt leads as well as the grounds for that 12 volt area as well. So what we're going to be doing is building the rest of the power harness around those particular leads. You will see that the 12 volts thinner gauge, and that is intentional. Before. I solder, I'm going to drop a little bit of heat shrink tubing on the wire just because that splice is quite big. You want to make sure you put your tubing on before you put the bare wires down into that hole. So otherwise you won't be able to fit it on after the fact. Using that helping hand to keep the wire up, I'm just going to come in with my solder and iron and hit that joint. I apologize for kind of covering that area up with my hand. Just kind of the angle, really hard to solder and use the camera at the same time. But you will see that that joint is 100% done and we are good to go on that particular part. I'm just going to pop that multimeter back into that female pin and I'm just going to go ahead and come up here and check for continuity. Continuity test good so we know we're 100% on that joint. A good rule of thumb is just to come in with your clippers and go ahead and clip those little joint legs off. I like to keep my finger over them just because when you clip if you don't have something protecting it they like to jump and fly all across the room. So now that we have our two 5 volt and two 12 volt leads, as well as our four grounds, we're going to go ahead and be able to hook up the power to the board itself. You'll see there's those grounds there. And because all the cables are black, I just made sure that I put a little red heat shrink so I knew which ones are live. You'll see that I'm just checking to make sure that those grounds are interconnected and we do have that common ground and we're good to go on that. And then I just make sure that all the other parts that I want connected are connected correctly. Once I have a particular area done on my work, I like to clean it up. What I'm going to do is just use this mesh webbing and come over a little bit of heat shrink tubing and hit it with the fire. It's not going to be so tight that that heat shrink tubing and mesh won't move, but it does hold everything together. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other end just to keep that mesh from kind of uh, fraying there. And that's going to make that particular cable run look really nice and clean until it gets into the connector. 
So that's it for this episode. In two weeks, we're going to go ahead and work on wiring up the flight stick into the board so that we have control for the PCB and the game. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. We'll have another episode of the main series coming out on Tuesday. Otherwise, we'll be back in two weeks to go ahead and continue the conversion for Beastbusters. Thanks so much for watching. If you can do us a huge favor, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Otherwise, have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye.